I'd like to thank everybody for coming out tonight. My name is Mark Flackney. I'm the president of Keep Columbia Free, and uh, Keep Columbia Free is very proud to be a part of this uh, civic organization, which is really an amalgam of a bunch of different uh, organizations and individuals around town. Uh, we, uh, we oftentimes, uh, there's a lot of people in this group that uh, don't agree very much of the time. Uh, we, we're, we're, I look at Carl Scala, and we, we have uh, plenty of debates online, but uh, on this issue, we're all together, and I think that really gives uh, power to this group, that there's so many people from all different uh, sides and, and uh, points on the political spectrum are here together to, uh, to hash this issue out. Uh, there are several people at the core of this group uh, that I, you know, I'd like to thank. I'm not going to start naming everyone. Uh, because I'm sure I'll forget some folks, but we got the Dan's here who are doing our audio and video tonight. That's, uh, we thank him for that. Amir Ziv, who uh, could not be here tonight, he got called away. He really put this thing together and, uh, and, and hassled folks to get him here and, and, uh, and, and beat the bushes to make this thing happen. Uh, also, Ben in the back there. Ben, give everybody a wave. He manages this place, he manages the Parkade Center, so I want to thank him for accommodating us. And, uh, this is a great room, and hopefully it'll get lots of use in the, in the years to come. So uh, I'd like to thank our guests tonight as well who took time out of their busy schedules to be here. Uh, immediately here, I've got Dave Rowland uh, from the Freedom Center of Missouri. He's, uh, he's a property rights expert and eminent domain attorney. We've got Barb Hoppy and Helen Anthony from the uh, uh, Columbia City Council. And we thank them for coming out tonight. Uh, also, uh, Mike Brooks, the president of Ready, the Regional Economic Development Incorporated, down on the end, here to answer your questions about this plan. So we thank him for coming out tonight. Uh, I want to remind everyone to remain civil tonight. We want to uh, really respect our guests for being, being brave enough to come out and, and face this group. I know there's been some, uh, it's very passionate, people feel very passionately about this issue. And it's okay to be passionate, I just hope everybody will be polite tonight. And uh, if not, we'll, we'll run you out. So. Uh, uh, <laughs> Don't try me, I'm in a bed. Uh, each of our guests tonight are going to be afforded a little bit of time to, if they have something they'd like to open the meeting with, uh, to, to speak a little bit to that. And then what we're going to do is open it up for public comment. That's what this is about. Uh, letting you guys have a voice in this process. So uh, questions, comments, uh, whatever, we've got a microphone set up over here on the side of the room. So just please step up there. We hope everybody will keep their questions and comments. We're going to try to keep it to around three minutes. We're not going to be real sticklers. If things are going well, we'll, you know, uh, we'll let you stay up there. I may, may bounce you and let it. We want everyone to have a chance. And it's okay to step up here more than once to the microphone. We just want to keep things rotating and give everybody a chance to speak their minds. Because there's, there are several different uh, uh, opinions on this issue and a wide-ranging thing. So we want everybody to have a chance to express their concerns and ask their questions. Um, also, if you uh, are so inclined, please donate some money tonight to Civic. Uh, we are uh, filing several uh, uh, sunshine requests, and, and some of those have been exorbitantly expensive. For a simple email search, we were charged around $500. So we could certainly... Uh, 436. You, I'm sorry? $436, $436 for uh, electronic mail. So... Uh, um, if you could help us out with that, uh, with that endeavor, that would be wonderful. I'm going to start off, and uh, I guess a lot of people have a top 10 list. I'm going to have, I'm going to one up that and have a top 11 list and list off some of the concerns, some of the varied concerns. And I'm going to miss some of those, I'm sure. Then there's plenty of other concerns in the audience. That's why we've got that microphone over there. But these are some of the things that we've been discussing. Uh, first, a blight designation for wide swaths of Columbia seems like a fraud especially when uh, based on census information from 2000, 12 years ago. Columbia is undoubtedly one of the least blighted cities in Missouri. Two, the plan was rushed to fruition with little to no public input. So that's why we're here tonight, because it seems like this thing came on quick. And I think uh, it came on quick to the city council and it came on quick to the public. And uh, we need to hash this out before things happen. Uh, three, despite the anecdotes offered by EEZ proponents, blight can affect property values as it casts a pall on the real estate market and provides a dis uh, disincentive for improvements. Four, blight opens the door for imminent domain abuse under existing Missouri law. Why has Reddy claimed that current law protects property owners from imminent domain abuse while asking that state statutes be changed to afford us those very protections? 
So we want to hash out uh, exactly what the dangers are with eminent domain. Five, the EEZ plan offers rule waivers that give competitive advantages to select businesses and put into jeopardy zoning and laws that protect individuals. Six, the EEZ tax abatement would shift tax burdens to individuals and businesses outside the EEZ abatement zone. After all, the government must get its money from somewhere. Seven, blight-based condemnations and takings have traditionally targeted the black community and the poor people of all races. Eight, there is little to no empirical evidence that tax abatement programs lure job-creating businesses. It is just as likely that businesses in current EEZ, EEZ zones would, uh, would have come anyway. There's, there's no real evidence out there that says they came because of these EEZ tax abatements. Um, tax abatements, or number nine, tax abatements uh, schemes erode the tax base that funds our infrastructure and public schools. Ten, the school district support of this plan has been misrepresented by EEZ proponents. Eleven, and the final, uh, final point here, and then we'll turn it over to, uh, to our panelists. Uh, current EEZ zones in Missouri cover some of the most truly distressed and poorest areas of the state. These areas remain among the poorest areas of the state. And uh, with that, I'll turn it over. Maybe we'll start right here with, with uh, Mr. Rowland, if you could kick us off. And you guys will share this.